Hello everybody, uh, this is Brother Luke, Sin City Preacher. I think the title of this video will be, Why Not Universal Salvation? Well, before I tell you my stance on this, uh, let me tell you why I'm even addressing this subject. There, there's a YouTuber here that made a comment uh, recently uh, on one of my videos. Uh, I, I had said that there's a, a YouTuber that I like and, and he agreed, yes, I, I like him too. And I also like Jay Flanders. Well, I didn't know anything about Jay Flanders, but based upon that recommendation, I thought, well, I'll go to his channel and, and check him out. Well, I, the first video I watched from Jay Flanders was uh, titled, Is Grace an Ear-Tickling Doctrine? Uh, I was so impressed with that message. It was definitely unadulterated free grace. Uh, it was beautiful. Uh, I don't. I've ever heard. I don't think I've ever heard anybody ever explain the free gift of salvation and free get, free grace any better than Jay Flanders did in that video. So we. I got off to a real good start. I was very highly impressed. I was anxious to see uh, what else he was saying. And as I scanned through his uh, videos and playlists, I found one that caught my attention, and it, it was titled. Love me, or I'll torture you forever, signed God. I thought, well, that's interesting. Uh, maybe he's talking about eternal torment in hell, and uh, I've made videos on this subject, so let me see what he has to say. As I watched the video, I realized that he, what he was doing was uh, he was uh, teaching and, and endorsing the, the doctrine of universal salvation. If you don't know what that term means, it simply means that that uh, uh, whether anybody believes in Jesus or not, uh, uh, in this lifetime, eventually, once they die, that Jesus is going to save everybody anyway. Uh, that everybody gets saved whether you believed in Jesus for salvation or not. That is universalism or universal salvation. I know there are other people who believe in that, uh, but uh, I don't hold to that doctrine. And it I, I makes me wonder, is this something that is a serious problem? Is this something to draw a line in the sand and say, uh, I can't tolerate uh, that viewpoint? If you know me very well, you know that um, I have made a lot of videos against dogmatism. Uh, it's the very, very common in uh, Christianity to have people form all kinds of dogmas and on dozens and dozens of subjects and doctrines, they get so dogmatic that uh, if anybody doesn't agree with them, then they, they have to separate from them. And my philosophy is that uh, I don't want to divide and, and uh, uh, separate from, from anybody unless it's absolutely necessary. So I, I have just a few conditions for someone to be in fellowship with me. For me to want to have fellowship with you, these are the basic conditions. Uh, there, there is no fail fellowship if you say that Jesus is not God Almighty. No fellowship for you if you say that faith in Jesus for salvation is insufficient. No fellowship for you if you say that we can lose our salvation for any reason. And there's no fellowship for you if beyond these three core doctrines, you are dogmatic on other things like Bible translations and eschatology and all kinds of other things, all the other subjects, uh, I require that people will tolerate other opinions, that we don't get too serious on all the other things, 
these three core doctrines are so imperative, so essential, that you must agree with that. Now, all the other theological questions, we should be able to have conversations and to agree to disagree, learn from each other, and not divide over these other things. So, if you're dogmatic about other things, and you cannot uh, associate with someone because uh, you don't agree with the Bible translation that they're, they're reading, then that's an example where no fellowship for you. You're too dogmatic. You're too intolerant. And then the final condition, no fellowship for you if you are just a rude and obnoxious person. Even if you agree with all my doctrines, if you agree with me 100% on everything and all of theology, and even beyond that, let's say you agree with me 100% on everything in life, but you are rude and obnoxious, why do I want to have fellowship with someone who is just a, that kind of a person? So, these are the things that I require if someone is going to uh, be, have fellowship with me. Just be a nice person, be tolerant of other opinions, and agree that Jesus is eternal God Almighty. Faith alone in Jesus is all that's required for salvation, and we can never lose our salvation for any reason. So, that brings us to the question of universalism. Um, is, this, is this an important thing, or is this something that we should just be able to discuss and agree to disagree? Well, uh, some of you may be aware that, you know, I have a, a playlist on, uh, on hell, and it's, it's titled Eternal Torment versus Eternal Death. By eternal death, I'm refer uh, referring to the, uh, the concept of annihilationism and conditional immortality. If you're not familiar with all these things, then you can go to that playlist. I will put up the link. Uh, and uh, on that playlist, I uh, make the case uh, against eternal torment in hell in favor of annihilationism and conditional immortality. I'm not going to try to prove that case now. I've got a, an entire playlist and numerous videos, hours and hours I've, I've put together, I think, proving the case against eternal torment in hell. So, uh, in this case, I agree with Jay Flanders in his objection to eternal torment in hell. So far, so good. And yet, I believe that when someone never puts their faith in Jesus they don't get to receive eternal life in the kingdom of God. They, they miss out, and they end up suffering what's called the second death in the lake of fire. They die, they perish, they no longer exist. So that's where Jay Flanders and I are, are, are in a disagreement here, and I have to part company. Now, is this, is this serious? Is it so serious that I could say, well, I, I could never recommend him, and I, I could never... Uh, uh, you know, a fellowship with him? Well, let's examine this. Uh, in, his, uh, in his video, uh, Love Me or I'll Torture You Forever, uh, uh, it's, it's very interesting how he makes the case against eternal torment, and he m attempts to make a case against annihilationism, and then he tries to prove his case for universalism. I don't think he proves the case at all, uh, but uh, let's get to why uh, why I am having a, a problem with this. Uh, does everybody get saved? What's wrong with that? Doesn't it, that sounds good? I've I've actually had private conversations with numerous brothers. Some of you probably watching the video right now, and you say, "Well, Luke, we've talked about this in the past, and we've speculated on it." And, and uh, some people even say, "Well, I don't believe it's true, but it would be nice to know that." You know, some of the people that we cared about that never got saved, but, but Jesus is going to save them anyway, and Jesus is going to end up saving everybody. Wouldn't that be nice? Well, I, we don't get to decide what is right and what's wrong. We don't get to decide what the truth is or not. We have to look at the scriptures and see what the scriptures say. So let's examine a few of these scriptures and, and see. Uh, I believe 
that this there's a concept in the scriptures that it's very very clear it's it's the exclusivity of Jesus in other words uh, I I have a lot of t-shirts that I've worn in my street preaching and it says only Jesus can save you now how do I come up with that only Jesus can save you well let's look at John 14 6 it says Jesus saith unto him I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man cometh unto the Father but by me. So here, uh, it, it's very clear. Uh, it, this is not something that anybody is going to argue and dispute what it means. This is so simple that anybody can understand it the first time you read it. Jesus is saying he is the way, the way for salvation, He's the truth you need to understand, the, what you need to believe in for salvation. He is the life. He is the source of life everlasting. So these are the claims Jesus is making. And then he not only says that he's the way, then he emphasizes it by saying, No man cometh unto the Father but by me. So he's doubling down and saying, Not only am I the way, I'm the one and only way. You cannot get to the Father. You cannot get eternal life in the kingdom of God any other way except through me. So, the question is, do we believe the scriptures? Do we believe the, the claims of Jesus? I do. And there is also, um, clearly, I can, I'm going to give you a couple of examples of this, but there's clearly a distinction between uh, two groups of people, the saved and the lost. Uh, so therefore, you can't say that there's one group of people. Everybody gets saved. There's clearly two groups, saved and lost. Now let's look at just a couple of verses to make the case. John 3.18 says, He that believeth on him is not condemned, but he that believeth not is condemned already because he hath not believed in the name of the only begotten Son of God. So here in this verse, there's a line drawn in the sand. There's a division. You're on either on one side or you're on the other side of this line. Do you believe on the Son of God for your salvation? Then you're not condemned. Do you, you don't believe in the Son of God for your salvation? Then you are condemned already because you have not believed in the name of the only begotten Son of God, Jesus Christ. So here we clearly see there are two groups of people. It's not one group. Everyone is universally saved. No. Now let's look at another one. John 3.36 He that believeth on the Son hath everlasting life. And he that believeth not the Son shall not see life. But the wrath of God abideth on him. Same kind of a verse. It's drawing a line in the sand saying there's two groups of people. Those that believe on the, on the Son have everlasting life. Do you believe on the Son of God? Do you believe on Jesus Christ for salvation? Then this verse says you have everlasting life. You've got it. Isn't that wonderful? But for those of you watching that, that say, well, I have, I've never believed on the Son. Well, it says, if you have never believed on the Son of God, Jesus Christ, for your salvation, it says, you shall not see life. You will not have life everlasting. Instead, the wrath of God it abides on you. You're waiting for the wrath of God to come on you. Clearly, we've got two groups of people, not one group uh, of universally saved people. Let's look at Matthew seven twelve through 14. Actually, I'm just looking at 13 and 14. It says, Enter ye in at the straight gate, for wide is the gate, and broad is the way that leadeth to destruction, and many there be which go in thereat. Because straight is the gate, and narrow is the way, which leadeth unto life, and few there be that find it. Again, we've got a distinction drawn here. You've got the a wide gate that uh, many are going through and it leads to destruction. They end up destroyed. They perish. The second death in the lake of fire. 
uh, and then it says, because straight is the gate and narrow is the way which leads to life. It's a, a small number of people. It says only a few find it. A few people will go through this narrow gate, this small gate that gives you eternal life, Jesus Christ. So clearly we see here there's two groups of people. People who go into destruction and people who go into life everlasting. And it says that there's only a few that go into life and many that go into destruction. So this is contradicting the concept that everybody gets life everlasting. Let's look at Revelation 2.11. Uh, he that hath an ear, let him hear what the Spirit saith unto the churches. He that overcometh shall not be hurt of the second death. The second death. Did you know there's a second death? Well, if you didn't know that, we'll examine this a little further. You'll find exactly what the second death is. Uh, there, there's an old cliche in Christianity that I think is kind of clever. It says, if you're born once, you will eventually die twice. But if you're born twice, you will only die once. Well, that means that if you're born only one time with a physical birth, then you're going to die when you get old or sick and die. And then you'll die the second death at the judgment when you are put into the lake of fire and you perish. That's the second death. But if, you, if you're born twice, that means you're born physically into this world, and then you're born again spiritually when you put your faith in Jesus. He resurrects your spirit and brings your spirit to life. Well, you're born twice. Now you only die once. When your body dies, well, you will live forever because you have everlasting life spiritually. Now, let's look at Revelation 20, verse 6. Blessed and holy is he that hath part in the first resurrection. On such the second death hath no power, but they shall be priests of God and of Christ and shall reign with him a thousand years. Well, this first resurrection, uh, there's a big misunderstanding what the first and the second resurrection is, but the first resurrection is when a person puts their faith in Jesus, their spirit is resurrected. Their spirit is brought to life, quickened, regenerated, born again. That's the first resurrection, the resurrection of your spirit when you put your faith in Jesus. Okay. Now, it says here that if you have taken part in this first resurrection, then you will not suffer the second death, which is being thrown into the lake of fire after the judgment. Look at Revelation 20.14. So, the point I'm making with these second death verses is simply that there is a group of people they, it clearly says they are going to be put in to the lake of fire and suffer the second death so are we going to assume that uh, that no that these verses are wrong and that, that that everybody gets saved they don't suffer the, so there's no real such thing as a second death or are they going to say that they suffer the second death but again uh, but then when they're in the lake of fire and they're perishing, they, that they call on the name of the Lord then, and then they get saved. That's what J. Flanders is teaching, and that's what universalism teaches, that at some point everybody gets saved. Uh, I got saved uh, 28 years ago. Uh, you could get saved today if you put your faith on Jesus. But universalism says... You don't have to put your faith in Jesus. You can do whatever you want. You can reject Jesus. You can believe anything you want. And, and, then, and yet, after you die, you'll still be able to get saved. In fact, everybody will get saved, whether you like it or not, because universally, everybody will be saved. Revelation 20, 14. And death and hell were cast into the lake of fire. This is the second death. So there clearly is a second death and people are put into the lake of fire and suffer the second death. So we know that there are two groups of people. There are the, the, the saved people and the lost people. The people who are spared the second death and the people who suffer the second death. So now, my question is this. 
mean, why is it a problem? Why is universalism an issue to me? Since I want to tolerate uh, other people's opinions on all kinds of doctrines, why is this important? Is it important enough to say, no fellowship if you are a universalist? Well, my first problem is, uh, if I was a universalist and I, and I believed that everybody is saved, regardless of whether they believe in Jesus or not, then I have no reason, there is no reason at all for me to ever tell anybody about Jesus. The Great Commission to go to the whole world and spread the good news and tell people about Jesus and salvation is pointless. There's no reason to do it because Jesus is going to save everybody anyway. Now, in this video of Jay Flanders, uh, that I will put the link up on this uh, on the uh, description of this video, but uh, on the link to his video, uh, when you watch his video, and I hope you do watch both of his videos, watch his video on grace because it's beautiful. Then watch his video on uh, uh, universalism, and you'll notice that at some point in that video, he says that. There is a reason for a person to get saved now. I mean, the obvious question is, why should anybody even want to get saved now? Or why, would they, why, why does it matter at all? And he says, the reason is that if you get saved now, then we can spend our life building up rewards because of what we do. Building up rewards in heaven. This is the only reason that Jay Flanders cited as a reason to get saved now. That's the only difference between someone who gets saved in their lifetime and they, and they have maybe some time to spend and, and doing some kind of ministry and good works and building up rewards for heaven. That's his reason for becoming a Christian. That's the only reason. Otherwise, there's no, no difference between someone who puts their faith in Jesus in this lifetime and someone who never put their faith in Jesus and they die and then they, get, uh, they, they end up being saved anyway or they put into the lake of fire and they dance, dance for a second and shout, Jesus save me, and they say, Jesus saves them then. There's no reason for anybody to get saved now uh, except that you can build up rewards according to him. And it also, there's an old saying that uh, you, you've heard this spoken to by so many people, and a lot of famous people are asked the question, well, well, uh, is, is Christianity the only way? Is Jesus really the only way? What about the people that don't believe in Jesus or never heard about Jesus or, or believe in other religions? What about Mother Teresa and what about, uh, you know, Gandhi, all these really nice, good people and who are, who are charitable, and are you saying that, they, they're not going to go to heaven uh, because they never believed in Jesus. And the person normally says, well, no, I think that there's many different paths, many different paths to God, many different roads or way, many different ways to go to heaven. But I think I've showed you clearly in this video, there are not many ways. Jesus said there's one way. He's the one way, one and only way. And uh, so if we're going to believe in universalism, we got to believe that uh, there's no reason why you should not be a Muslim. Go ahead and be a Muslim. You're going to heaven anyway. Uh, you could be a, uh, an atheist or, or, or a Satanist or anything you want. All those ways are equally eff effective. Everybody's going to go to heaven uh, uh, no matter what you believe or no matter uh, what uh, philosophy or religion or no religion you have in your life. They're all equal. They all end up at the same place with eternal life in the kingdom of God. Jesus is going to save everybody anyway. Well, if you go to my playlist on uh, eternal torment versus eternal death, uh, you'll, you'll see more about why I'm against the teaching of eternal torment. As much as I disdain the teaching of eternal torment, I would, I would never separate with a brother or sister in Christ if they believe in eternal torment, even though I don't. Because at least if they're teaching that if you don't believe in Jesus, you're not going to have eternal life in heaven. You can't be saved unless you put your faith in Jesus. And in fact, 
if you don't put your faith in Jesus, you're going to be eternally tormented in hell. Well, at least that person is proclaiming that there is a need right now for you to put your faith in Jesus. So, uh, I can fellowship with someone who believes in eternal torment, but I, I could not fellowship with someone who believes in universalism because uh, th they are nullifying the Great Commission to even tell people about Jesus. There's no reason to. They're, uh, they're uh, negating the proclamation that, that uh, there are saved and there are lost people. Some people will suffer the second death. Some people won't. And that, and that uh, there, Jesus is the only way to get to heaven. And we need to put our faith in him. They're, they're negating all of that and saying there's no need for that. So, I would have to say that uh, if someone is teaching universalism, then, uh, then I, I could not endorse or, uh, or felt their, their teaching, their, their, no matter how good they are in teaching about the grace of God or any of these other doctrines, uh, I could not recommend them. And, uh, and I, because they're, they're saying there's really no need, it's not necessary for you to believe in Jesus. All right, well, I hope you understand why this is a serious issue. And uh, I hope you'll watch Jay Flanders' video on grace because it's beautiful and it's perfect. I hope you watch this video on universalism so you can see uh, better what, what, why I have these strong objections to it. And I hope you'll watch my playlist on uh, eternal torment versus eternal death. And you'll understand, you know, how I am backing up and, and proving my case against eternal torment. So, bless you all and rest in the love and grace of our great Savior God, Jesus Christ.